you are entering a realm of imagination where dreams are told between the lines of the universe. This is a Midnight Tale podcast. I'm your host, Celeste, your guide through this dreamscape. Hello, my midnight creeps. Welcome back, and I am glad that you're all here for this week's creepy tale. I'm so excited that it's finally October. I have been loving all the Halloween decorations coming out and all of my fellow spooky people decorating. I'm recording this October 1st and I have already decorated my living room. Also, I'm going to watch my favorite October movies, which are The Nightmare Before Christmas and, of course, Halloween. I know, I'm so original, but these are my comfort nostalgic movies. I just live for hearing the screams of people being hunted by Michael Myers. If you are watching this on YouTube, please comment down below your favorite spooky movies. Also, wherever you are listening, please like, follow, and share the podcast. I really appreciate you helping the podcast grow. This week's tale is about how Celeste encounters a strange creature in her yard. So listen carefully in case you cross paths with this little demon. The sun beamed down warmly on my back as I was caring for my tiny garden. I clipped off dead flowers and branches. I added more dirt in spots that had become packed or washed away. I pulled out weeds and made sure my patch of lawn didn't have any invading plants. I watered everything down and gave my plants a nice drink. I collected a few of the flowers and put them in a basket to display in my house and one rose to give to my mom. I took a look around and admired how nice my little garden looked. I couldn't wait to host my annual summer backyard barbecue with my friends and family. It was this Saturday, which was in two days. I enjoyed hosting the lively get together. Everyone enjoyed lounging in my lush grass. They said it was the softest, greenest grass they had laid in. My dog wasn't even allowed to use the grass as a restroom. He had to use a corner of the front yard that nobody saw. Thankfully, my little Pomeranian Leo was a good boy, and he loved to lay or roll around in the grass. I found myself with my giant sun hat and spritzed water onto my face. My gardening dress was a dark green that had speckled light blue birds and flowers. Under it were old black leggings. I wore a large stained denim apron that matched my gloves. Leo came over and rolled over. I gave him a few belly rubs or I scooped him up and showered him with kisses. When I set him down, he zoomed around the yard, a little fluffy ball of tan and white. I got up to finish my last task. I refilled my hummingbird feeders, which the little birds waited patiently in the trees. I cleaned my bird baths and filled them with new water so the bubbler didn't get algae slime. I looked around and sighed with relief. I had finally finished. I took off my apron and gloves, then laid in the grass. I watched the large clouds pass by. Butterflies fluttered around the flowers and a couple bees buzzed past. I took off my shoes and dug my toes into the grass. It felt squishy and soft, better than any carpet. I couldn't help but feel a tingle shoot up my feet and legs as I ran my toes through the lush grass. It was cool and still a little damp, which felt nice in the heat of the sun. Leo ran by and I jumped up to chase him. I ran around with him for a few minutes before he got tired and went to lay under the shade of his outdoor dog bed. I sat down too on my patio under the umbrella. I heard my friend's car come into the garage. Priscilla was my roommate and lived in one of the bedrooms. I had bought the house with my parents' help a few years ago during college and she had happily moved in to get her own private place. And she has happily stayed since. We were looking for a third roommate again to lower our payments. She came around outside and we chatted about the upcoming barbecue. She had a few plans about how she wanted to decorate and buy some tablecloths. Also, we made sure to mark down what foods or things our friends and family would bring over to the party. Mostly, we talked about the playlists we were making and the songs we were going to play during the party. As we talked, Priscilla admired the flowers in my basket and picked up a flower. She twirled it in her fingers a little before she completely froze. She stared intensely at the flower before she screamed and threw it. I asked her, what's wrong? She pointed at the flower and said, there's a disgusting bug on it. I went over and reached for the flower. I realized that there were some tiny holes in the leaves and flowery petals that I hadn't noticed before. 
I looked on the bottom of a leaf and there for sure was a green chunky caterpillar munching on the leaves. I picked it off and put it in my hand. I looked through the other flowers where Priscilla said, I can't believe you can just touch them like that. They're so gross and nasty. It gives me the creeps. She ran her hands off on her shirt and she shivered with disgust. I said, it's not so bad. They're not going to bite me or anything. They're just little caterpillars. Although they're hella annoying because they're eating up my flowers again. She said, I love your garden and I love looking at it, but I could never do this. It would all be fake flowers out here, to be honest. I just can't stand those bugs. I can barely stand the butterflies. I definitely wouldn't want them landing on me anyway. I guess they're pretty at least. I laughed a little as I knew Priscilla hated bugs. I wasn't so bothered with them as it came with the territory of gardening, although I still got a little freaked out by some of the creepy ones that I found occasionally. I looked up and said, don't forget our annual pesticide treatment from the company. She said, oh yeah, like I would forget. It's going to be tomorrow, so before the party, we'll have it bug free for everyone. She said this as she was hiding halfway between the sliding glass door. She stared at me picking off the rest of the caterpillars that had been hiding in the flowers and leaves. It was amazing how those little things could hide so well, and they blended right in as they were the same color as the leaves. I was able to pick off about 10 of them before I couldn't find any more, or they were just hiding extra good. They wiggled and squirmed in my hand, their chunky fat bodies trying to escape, but I definitely wasn't going to let them back onto my flowers. I went over and picked up my shoes and put them back on. I threw the caterpillars onto the floor and then immediately stomped on them on the patio. Priscilla squealed with disgust as she immediately went inside and closed the door. I was slightly disgusted at the blue greenish wet stains left by the caterpillars and a little upset about how much they had eaten of my flowers before I had even noticed. Those caterpillars were actually the larva for some small white moss that came around at night and laid their eggs, which is why I never could catch them or kill them. Also, I had been neglecting to spray my plants with my homemade pesticide. I quickly scraped my shoes into the grass to clean them a little. I went to the side of my house to my little gardening chest where I had stored the pesticide. I brought it out and shook it so all of the different herbs, spices, and chemicals that I had put in it would mix back together. Leo came up to me and started sniffing the grass of bag pesticides that I used to keep the grass maintained. I quickly scooped him up and put him back inside to be safe from the chemicals. I put back on my apron and gloves and I went to work. I went around the lawn and sprinkled the pesticides into the grass and then watered it down to have it seep into the soil. I then went and started spraying all of my plants around the yard, generally coating them in the spray to keep away the bugs. I swatted a few bees away and I managed to kill a wasp with the fly swatter that I always kept nearby. I hated the crunch that their bodies made when they got squished, but I was always satisfied knowing that there was one less nasty bug. I reached towards the end of my garden when I looked into one of my rose bushes. I saw that there was a red stick in the center of it which was a little odd because usually the branches didn't dry to a red color when they were dead. I assumed maybe a bird had dropped the stick from another plant. I went to reach for it to fish it out. I carefully made my way through the thorns of the rose bush and grabbed the stick to pull it out. Suddenly, it started wiggling and moving. Its little legs started thrashing. Its claws scraped against my gloves and I could hear its wings fluttering with a dry, husky sound. I immediately screamed and I yanked my hand out. My glove got caught on a few thorns that got torn a little. The bug was caught into the threads of my glove as well, and it also got yanked out. It still made that nasty clawing, scraping sound on my gloves, and its dry wings fluttered crazily as I tried to free my hand from the bush. I ripped my hand up through the bush, which threw the bug up into the air through all of those branches. It landed close to me on top of the grass. I immediately jumped back and I saw that it was a red and black praying mantis that had thorns on his body that matched the rose bush. It spun around crazily with its broken wings and legs as it tried to move away. It was humongous, almost a foot long, with huge wings on its back that were also reddish brown, black and white. 
I had never seen such a big praying mantis before. It was unnaturally big. I squirmed back a little. I hated praying mantises. They have always freaked me out. When I was little, one had managed to find its way into my hair. I didn't even know it was there until I reached up to scratch my head. It clamped down on my fingers with its clawed arms. It scared me so bad and it got tangled into my hair it had to be cut out. It was a horrible experience because it made the same wing buzzing and clawing just like this one. I had to wait an eternity or what felt like it before my dad was able to cut it out of my hair. This one was especially nasty looking with its bumpy, thorny looking body and weird coloration that made it look dangerous. It had a long black diamond shaped head with thick antennas on either side. It looked so alien with its giant blood red eyes. I could see its mandibles where its mouth was furiously opening and closing like it was screaming. It had a long black diamond shaped head with thick antennas on either side. It looked so alien with its giant blood red eyes. I could see its mandible mouth parts. It lifted its spiky arms up and flashed these huge underwings that had white with a black mark in the middle. It almost looked like a skull. It started swaying back and forth with its nasty clawed arms, showcasing the small skulls staring right back at me. It was a little mesmerizing watching as it swayed back and forth in a little dance, trying to scare me off. I had never seen or heard of a praying mantis that looked like this. I snapped out of my daze as soon as it lunged towards the bushes again trying to hide. It made it a couple inches before it crashed down again. Its broken wings and legs made it difficult for it to move. I definitely wasn't going to let this thing live in my garden rent free. I never wanted to run into it again. I took off my apron and quickly threw it on top of the praying mantis so it couldn't escape and I would know where it was. I ran over back to my garden chest where there was a small closet that held the shovel and a few other gardening tools. I grabbed the shovel and ran back to the apron. I used the shovel to slide the apron off the praying mantis. It quickly tried to run away again into the bushes. It made it to a small branch and quickly started climbing onto it. I used the shovel and flicked it off the branch back into the grass. I stared at it for one more second before it tried to escape again. I quickly crushed it into the grass with the shovel. I made a loud popping and crunching noise as I smacked it repeatedly with the shovel to kill it. It was so disgusting and I could feel the crunching even through the shovel handle. It made my skin crawl. I lifted up the shovel and I could see that the praying mantis was completely smashed into the grass. Its broken body was a mess. I looked at the back of the shovel and realized that it was covered in a black, wet spot. I carefully looked around the grass and I realized that it was covered in black as well, almost like black blood. I shivered one more time with disgust and I used the shovel to pick up as many of the pieces of the body as I could. I dumped it into a trash can and then sprayed off the grass with the hose. I picked up my apron and shook it. I was a little scared that I might find a leg or something still attached to it. I was so thankful to be done gardening for the day. I sat back down under the umbrella and enjoyed a little bit more of the sun. I fell asleep from the warmth of the sunny summer afternoon sun. Suddenly, I jerked awake because I could hear the buzzing sounds just like the wings of a bug. I quickly sat up and looked around. I could hear the buzzing coming from above me. I looked up and I realized there was a small wasp nest being built right above me in the umbrella. I don't know why me and Priscilla had never noticed that before, but there it was, those tricky little evil things, they always seemed to spring up anywhere. I gathered up my things and flowers and rushed them inside so I could spray down the wasp nest in the whole patio. When I went outside, Leo managed to escape between my legs as I opened the door. I gathered up my flowers and Leo and rushed them inside so I could spray down the wasp nest in the whole patio. When I went outside, Leo managed to escape between my legs as I opened the door. He ran out into the patio. Immediately, several wasps came down on him and started stinging him. He yelped and he started crying. 
He ran back towards me. I picked him up quickly and tried to bring him inside while swatting the wasps away. I could feel them sting me on my arms, hands, and neck. I managed to block most of them outside, but a couple managed to get in. I yelled for Priscilla to come help me as they kept flying around me and Leo. I grabbed the fly swatter and managed to keep them off from stinging me more. Priscilla came in and she started screaming as soon as she saw the wasp flying around me. She grabbed another fly swatter and she was screaming the whole time. She helped me corner and then kill them. After we had killed them, we looked outside the patio door and we could see the other ones buzzing around the umbrella and the sliding glass door. She said, what the hell? These wasps were so aggressive. Also, where did they come from? I said, I'm not sure why they attacked me. Their nest is under the umbrella. She said, we were just there and I definitely would have noticed if it was there yesterday. I always keep an eye there to make sure that it's free from bugs and spiders. She saw me wincing as the stings were already starting to get irritated. I looked at Leo. I had squished him up against my chest to protect him. He was shaking. Thankfully, he only had two stings on his face, which were the only part that was really exposed to the wasp because he wasn't super fluffy there. I looked at my own hands and arms and I had a couple of stings. I could feel one right in the back of my neck. I asked her, can you bring me some vinegar and an ice pack for me and Leo? She said, of course. Do you want some meds too? I said, sure. And also bring the medicated ones for Leo. She quickly went over to the kitchen and bathroom, gathering up the supplies. I sat down on the couch with Leo and she handed me an ice pack while she got everything else. I ran the ice pack over my arms, my hands, and the back of my neck. I also patted the ice pack onto his little face and snout. He was still whimpering and shaking a little. I calmed him down with lots of hugs and pats, although I was still a little shaken from the sudden attack. Priscilla brought over the supplies. I dipped a small cotton bud into apple cider vinegar. I dabbed that over Leo's face to help reduce envenomation. I gave him a medicated treat to help with the pain. I also dabbed the vinegar over my own stings. I took some meds and kept the ice pack on the back of my neck as it hurt the most. While I was doing that, Priscilla had slipped on some dishwashing gloves. She was cleaning up the dead bodies and guts of the wasps. She called over to me. We need to make sure the exterminator takes care of those wasps. They're giant and aggressive and they're still trying to get through the glass. I could hear the clink, clink, clink of the wasps ramming their body into the glass. I said, I don't want to wait until tomorrow. They could come around to the front of the house. I set Leo into his crate to heal up. I told Priscilla to stay at the window to distract the wasps. Before I went outside, I quickly got a disinfected spray, which we used to kill the bugs, since me and Priscilla hated the smell of bug spray, and it worked pretty well. I went around to the front of the house to go through the side gate to get the hose. I pulled the hose towards me and changed the power to full blast. I ran over towards the wasps and I started blasting them with the high-pressured water. Some of them were completely blown away and I sprayed the nest off of the umbrella and it fell to the floor. I kept spraying around me, into the umbrella, the chairs. The wasps were no match for the hose and they were either killed or flew away. I kept the hose ready just in case. I walked over to the small nest. I could see it was filled with eggs. It was just a completely gross, wet mess. I didn't want to, but I stepped on it, and I felt it squish down into a gooey mess. I cringed so hard. I could see the eggs had burst open and tiny wasp babies had come out. I quickly stepped on those two to make sure that they were completely dead. It was super nasty and I could barely handle it. I used the hose to obliterate the nest and it shredded into pieces with a high-powered blast. I washed it away into a corner of the yard away from the grass. I stared around the yard and there were no wasps to be seen. I made sure to quickly coil up the hose before I went back inside. Priscilla asked, are they all gone? I said, yeah, I think it's just so weird that they decided to attack poor Leo and me when we had been out there for a while already. Priscilla said, I'm so glad the exterminator is coming tomorrow to spray down everything. It seems like the last treatment didn't do anything. I said, we just have to make sure he gets everything this time. 
and not just around the house, on the umbrella, on the trees, everything. Also to look for any more wasp nests and destroy them. She shivered and said, yeah, I saw you step on that nest. It was so disgusting. She shivered a little more and said, okay, I've had enough of this. I'm going to stay in my room. I hope you feel better. Let me know if you need anything. I said, thanks, Priscilla. I appreciate it. I'm just going to sit down inside too. My neck is killing me with these stings. I showed her my arm. We could both see the angry red bumps of where the wasps had stung me. Priscilla quickly looked over the basket and gave me an anti-itch cream that helped to soothe the red bumps. She said, I'm also going to send out the final reminders for the barbecue so we can email them out. I said, thanks. I'm glad that it's coming up soon. It's definitely going to take my mind off of this incident. She rubbed my arm and said, okay, I'll leave you here so that way you can rest up. I took Leo out of his crate and he was a little drowsy from the medication and the wasp things. We both lounged on the couch together while I watched TV. After a couple hours, I went over to the kitchen to get a bite to eat. I went through the cabinets and the fridge, but I didn't really find anything I wanted. I looked at the table, which had some bananas and apples. I reached for an apple, but as I was putting it up to my mouth, I realized there were ants crawling all over it. I turned it over and I realized that it was rotten on one side. I quickly threw down the apple onto the table. I swatted and smacked the ants to kill them. I looked at the table and I realized that there was a line of ants trailing from the apples all the way down out the door. I looked at the apples and realized that half of them were bad, which was weird because we had just gotten them yesterday. I quickly tossed the bad apples into a bag. I took some wipes and cleaned up the ants. I followed their trail all the way out the door. I found their ant hill on the side of the house as they were streaming in and out of it. I was super frustrated by this point because of all these freaking bugs that seemed to be everywhere today. I stomped all over the ants, disrupting their path. I wiped them down with the same wipe and caught them up in the fibers. I went inside and boiled some water. As I waited for it to heat up, I cleaned up the table and the floor with some bleach. I even grabbed one of our cans of bug spray and sprayed the outside patio steps and ground where the ants had been. They were scattering like crazy, going into a frenzy as I tried to avoid the spray. I took a spade and opened up the ant hill, making the opening a little bit bigger. Tons of ants started streaming out, but they all stayed towards the opening, trying to close it back up with dirt. I went back inside and I grabbed the pot of boiling water. I carefully brought it outside and I poured it straight into the ant hill. All of the ants on top instantly died. I carefully and slowly let it drip in to get into all the cracks and crevices as far down as the water could get into the ant nest. When I was done, there was absolutely no ants or activity. I poured some of my homemade pesticide into it to keep them from coming back up. Then I patted dirt on top of it to cover up the hole. I went back inside and plopped back onto the couch after I put the pot away. Leo jumped into my lap and I was exhausted from gardening and the whole mess with all these bugs. I decided to go to sleep early as I still had to go to work the next day. I got myself ready for the night, preparing my lunch, cleaning up, and making myself some tea. While I prepared myself for the night, the sun went lower and lower into the sky, and I could see a couple of mosquitoes and moths starting to come out already. As I saw them fluttering around, I realized that they were probably making their way towards my flowers to lay even more eggs that would eventually get eaten up by their freaking little worms. I took a step outside and I could see that I was right. There were a dozen moths landing on my flower bushes. I quickly went over to my garden chest and pulled out another one of my homemade pesticides. I jumped up and quickly started spraying the moss with the pesticide, trying to get each one of them. A couple got away, but I managed to douse the other ones with the pesticide. I used the small spade to shovel them up and quickly squished them with a rock, then tossed their bodies back into the dirt. I was very satisfied that I actually was able to catch them that day. I had a little smile on my face as I tossed the last one back into the dirt. When I looked at the spade and realized that it turned red, 
Usually, those little white moss guts were gray or blue, never red. I realized that the yard had completely turned silent. There were no birds singing or crickets chirping. It was oddly still and silent. My mind flashed back to the red and black praying mantis I had seen. I shivered, thinking that another one could be hiding in the bushes. I shook my head to get it out of my thoughts. I slapped my arms, feeling the mosquitoes already attacking my skin. I walked back to the chest and I could feel little spider webs already catching onto my skin, which was weird because they didn't usually build their webs until really late at night, which is why I never went outside at that time. Especially since I could always find a roach or two running around on the patio. I went back through the sliding glass doors and a spider web caught right in my face. I tried to flick it away, but it felt like it was just sticking on. Finally, after wildly wiping my face with my hands, I was able to get it off my face by wiping it onto my dress. I was so done at this point. I went straight to my room. I told Priscilla on my way good night, and I would see her in the morning. I changed into my pajamas. I put Leo into his little dog bed by mine, and I finally curled up to sleep. My night was plagued with nightmares. In my dream, I was in my house, and large abnormal spider webs stretched across the walls. The spiders watched me from the corners of the room, and they were gigantic. They looked like tarantulas with their long, hairy legs and giant black beady eyes that sat on top of their head. They were gray with black stripes all over their body. I tried to make my way through the house without touching any of the spider webs, but each time I accidentally touched one, the spider would run down from the web from the corner of the room. They would bite me with their long fangs. I would fling them off into a wall, but they would immediately get back up again. I raced around the corner of the living room full of bites up and down my arms and legs. In the living room, I saw Priscilla struggling and holding Leo. They both cried as they tried to thrash around and escape from the spider's web. Blood was running down Priscilla's arms and legs as the spiders continued biting her. I tried to go over to help, but suddenly, these car-sized armored beetles with huge jaws locked onto my legs. The spikes that they had on their jaws pierced into my legs and kept them in place. I cried on in pain, but I struggled to get free. A pair of centipedes crawled onto my arms, pinning them to my sides. I could feel their legs prick into my skin as their legs creeped up. They were mostly silent except for the slight rustle of their legs and the slight creaking of their jaws opening and closing. I tried to shake them off, but they just tightened their grip on my skin. They finally reached up to my neck and clamped their jaws around either side. Their antennas were touching and caressing my face. I could feel their mouths slightly pinching and gnawing at my flesh. I was completely immobilized. Suddenly, I heard a loud, dry, brittle buzzing sound along with a creaking and snapping. The other insects grew excited and also buzzed their wings or vibrated their legs, which shook me to my core as the sound was deafening as the massive swarm of bugs that appeared and carpeted the floor. Something was coming from outside into the house. A huge dark shadow appeared at the sliding glass doors. They exploded out, sending glass everywhere. Me and Priscilla both screamed while Leo started barking and growling. I woke up to the sound of Leo barking and growling. I flicked on the light next to my bed. Before I turned over to look at Leo, I saw my arms were covered in bites. There were so many bites I couldn't even count. There were some times where I would be bit by mosquitoes at night, but this was something completely different. Usually they attacked my legs, not my arms, and it almost looked like chicken pox. My whole body felt like it was crawling with bugs. I could still feel the ones from my dreams surrounding me. I flung off my blanket from my legs. I saw that they were covered in the same bites. They looked just as horrible as my arms. I rubbed my arms and legs to get rid of the tingly, crawling feeling on them. I told Leo to shush as he was still barking and growling. I was worried because he hardly barked at anything. 
I turned towards him to calm him down. As I turned, my eyes drifted to the darkest corner of my room, where the light didn't quite reach. I saw someone standing there. I froze, hoping my eyes were just playing tricks on me. I blinked a few times, but it didn't go away, and it made it all the clearer that a creature was standing there, not a person. It was too tall and the head just looked all wrong to be a human. As I stared at the corner, Leo continued to growl and bark. It started making a dry, brittle buzzing sound, just like the noise from in my dream. It approached slowly out of the shadows, continuing to make the same buzzing noise. Leo stopped barking. He whimpered then went completely silent. The creature stepped out into the light. It was a red and black praying mantis with a man's body in a suit. The creature's head was the same as the one I saw in my garden. It had the same black diamond spiked head with large blood red eyes. Its thick antennas twitching with excitement at me. Its head was attached to a human neck. The man's body was wearing a black suit and tie. Its wings hung down behind it like coattails. I saw that it had the same colored wings like before. They were vibrating, which was making the horrible buzzing sound. Its human hands reached out to me, palms up. Its legs were covered in pants that then thinned out to skinny insect feet. It had extra legs tucked by its sides. As it creeped forward even more, I realized it wasn't wearing a suit but its skin was colored to look like it. I could see the rippling muscle now that covered the body. Its body stretched down and it had an abdomen curled up behind its back. Its whole body was glossy and its skin or scales shined like it was polished. It reached for it again. This time the claws separated from the forearms. From the wrist of the human hands, it had these clawed hook arm extensions, just like any Priamantis. I was absolutely shocked, and I couldn't believe this was real. I blinked my eyes again, and I buried my head into my pillow. After a second, I peeked out again after it had gone silent. I looked, and it was bent over staring straight at me with those huge red eyes. I screamed and jumped back. It straightened up and waved its arms around. It showed off the same underwings with the human skulls. It started buzzing its wings again. I screamed again. I then felt something on my hand. I looked down at a huge centipede with more bugs crawling up the side of my bed. I could hear Priscilla banging on the door. I kept screaming as I flung the centipede off and jumped back off the bed. In that second that I turned my back slightly to the creature, it grabbed me with its human hands and wrapped its arms around me. The body had small spikes on it. The spikes felt just like the thorns on a rose bush. I started thrashing trying to get free, but the more I tried, the tighter it held onto me. Its head was resting on my shoulder. Its mouth was running up and down my neck. The buzzing from the wings was so loud. I felt something wet and slimy climbing up my pant leg. The abdomen was hot and against my legs. I could hear Priscilla slamming the door, yelling my name. Leo was jumping up at it and barking crazy. The creature flicked one of its legs out and smacked Leo away. Leo crashed into a wall and didn't move. I screamed for Leo. I yanked my arms out and reached up, punching straight into its eyes. Its left eyes made a cracking noise. It reeled back in pain, but I continued punching its left eye until it burst open. When it finally popped open, the buzzing grew even louder, almost like it was excited. I could feel that slimy thing reaching up even further my pant leg. But then Priscilla burst open the door. I could see that she held in her hands a tire iron. She screamed and dropped it as soon as she saw the creature. Her eyes rolled back into their head. She fainted and the creature made a small screeching noise, then let go of me. I sank onto the floor and quickly crawled over to Leo. I picked him up. He was still breathing, thankfully. 
I didn't see anything broken or hurt, although he did have a small cut on the side of his head. I looked back over to the creature. It was inspecting Priscilla's body, but didn't seem interested in her. The buzzing noise had slowed down to a low hum. I realized I heard another woman's voice that sounded far away. I looked and I saw that Priscilla had dropped her phone outside my door. I couldn't quite make out what was being said, but I could only assume it was 911. The creature started walking out my door when the lights of the police car glowed brightly through the windows. The creature crouched down in a defensive position, then suddenly shrunk to a miniature size, back to the size I had seen it when it was in my garden. I could hear the police pounding on the door to be let in. I went over to Priscilla. She looked fine overall, but she had probably hit her head on the way down. I picked up the phone. I said, hello? The operator said, is the intruder gone? Are you safe to talk right now? I looked around, but the creature had disappeared. I said, yes. She asked, what was that noise that intruder was making? It sounded like bees. Are you safe from that? I said, I really don't know where it went. I don't know if it's going to come back. You wouldn't believe what I've seen tonight. She asked, what did the intruder look like? I said, it wasn't a man. It was a creature, a devil's praying mantis. You heard it. I don't know how you couldn't tell what was going on. You're the only one who knows about it besides my friend. I've seen it. While I was talking to the operator, the police were still pounding on the door. A light then shone through my window as the police officers were going around the house. She said, The devil's praying mantis. She sounded very confused. I sobbed out, No one is going to believe me. No one can protect me. What am I supposed to do if it comes back? She said, you're not alone, and the officers will help you feel secure in your house. I said, they're not going to stay around forever. There's only me. I looked down on my legs. I felt something wet and cold creep up on them. I realized it was the goo that came out of the creature's eye. I reached out to the tire iron and gripped it hard. I said with new determination, it's not impossible to defeat. I've already punched open its eye. Just like any bug, it can be squashed. She started to ask me another question, but I clicked the phone off. Then I heard the officers burst open through the door, and they came inside. They finally got to my room. They searched the whole house for the intruder, but obviously they didn't find anything. When they asked Priscilla what had happened, she said that she heard me screaming in my room. But she didn't remember anything after that because she had hit her head. When they asked me what happened, I said that I was having a night terror and that I had been sleepwalking, acting out what was happening in my nightmare. It was the only way I could justify what I said next without them thinking I was completely crazy. I told them the whole story about what happened. But to them, it was just a dream, something I could get help for my sick mind. But to me, I knew it was all too real. They cleaned me up and took samples of the weird liquid from the eye and some pieces of the scale that had come off on my clothes. They asked about the wounds on my back and all the bites. The wounds were actually not that big when I looked at the shirt, and there wasn't as much blood as I thought there was going to be. The spikes on the body must have been just as small like thorns on a rose bush, and they hurt just like hell too. I told them that I had fallen earlier into my roses and then had gotten bit while I was working in my garden. The wounds must have opened back up when I was sleepwalking. The EMTs were really suspicious about my story, but the police officers wrote up my story, then gave it to me so I could use it as proof for my doctor's visit for the severity of my issue. The police officers and EMTs soon left. They told us to take care, but of course they weren't going to help us replace the broken down doors. But one of the officers kindly stayed behind until we could call Priscilla's brother to come over and stay for a little bit because he didn't live too far. 
While we waited for Priscilla's brother, Eric, we sat down on the couch together in silence. Leo had woken up and he was a little groggy, but he ate and drank something before staying close to me on my lap. I kept the tire iron close to my side. Priscilla looked over to me and asked, was it really just a nightmare? I asked, do you think it was? Do you remember? Priscilla shook her head. I just know that those screams sounded like you were really getting hurt. She paused for a second. Her eyes grew wide. She said, that noise, that horrible buzzing noise, it sounded like a swarm of bees in there. I remember that scared me just as much as your screams because how could such a noise exist in there? I didn't want whatever was making that noise to come out. I knew it had to be a disgusting thing. I asked, do you remember anything else? She thought for a second. She said, red, red and black, red eyes. Her voice was shaking. I said, Priscilla, you are safe. It doesn't want you, it passed you right by. You heard my story, right? It was all true. Priscilla put her hand up to her mouth. She said, it can't be, it can't be real. But she gripped my hand tightly back while she shook her head. She said, if it wants you, it's gonna have to get through me. I'm not gonna let anything happen to you. We both hugged on the couch. I started coming up with a plan. Priscilla's brother, Eric, came over and he started working on the door, trying to fix it while we went over some ideas in the kitchen. We were not gonna separate until we knew for sure this thing was dead. We brought out all of the knives and different tools that we had that we could use to kill it, since we knew that my fists had been able to hurt it. We had to carry a weapon on us at all times, in case we separated by accident. We let out the rest of the weapons around the house, just in case. Eric made a makeshift lock to get the door to close, and at least stay closed. The sun was rising at this point. We both called out from work. We had Eric stay. Thankfully, he didn't have to work that day. Also, he didn't ask too many questions. He was just a supportive presence. We asked him to stay in the living room and all three of us took a much needed sleep on the couch together. However, my sleep was still plagued with nightmares. More bugs tried to swarm over me, which I had a fight stomping countless of them. The devil praying mantis was circling around me, waiting for its opportunity to strike. I woke up feeling just as tired as I did when I fell asleep, but thankfully the sun had fully come out. I went over to the kitchen and there was a weird smell. I realized I hadn't thrown out the bag of bad apples from yesterday. I picked it up and realized that there was something else in it and it felt a little heavier. I took a quick peek inside. I gagged a little. I saw the apples were completely covered in maggots. I could hardly see the apples underneath. I took a giant knife with me as I threw out the apples in the big bin outside. While I was out there, tons of roaches were crowded around the trash can. They scurried over my feet when I tried to throw it away. I tried to fling them off my feet and stomp on them. There were so many. They were fast and it was so difficult. The rest of the day, me and Priscilla were killing or just trying to avoid all of the bugs. It seemed that they were invading the house. There were large spiders that would descend from the ceiling at random moments. Water beetles that would jump out of the drain. June bugs that would fly into the windows and try to get into our ears. I couldn't go back into my room either. I cringed at the thought of the centipede actually being in there. The whole day, I kept seeing shadows in the corner of my eyes. I would quickly look and would just miss seeing it. It was a blur of shadows, but I felt continuously watched. Also, we found lots of other weird exotic insects, like giraffe neck beetles that tried to gnaw on our skin, assassin bugs with their long needle-like mouths, larva worms that appeared out of nowhere in our food. Eric was really creeped out by the amount of bugs and blamed it on us, even though he could clearly see that the house was kept up well. I could only imagine that this was the devil mantis's work. 
It was exhausting having to deal with all the bugs that suddenly popped up. With each bug I killed, it seemed like more and more were just coming, and faster. Thankfully, the exterminator came that evening. We told him to spray inside, outside, everywhere, every nook and cranny that he could find. We left to Eric's apartment while the exterminator took care of his job. At his apartment, we were able to crash in his bed, but the nightmare still didn't leave me. This time, it was back with the giant bugs again. I hated the way their legs felt on my skin. The way it pricked and scraped against it with their weird, hairy, and slightly spiked legs. I hate the way the wings sounded so dry and brittle. The hum as it surrounded me. It was disgusting. When I woke up again, I felt more tired. Thankfully, his apartment didn't have the bug problem that we had. None of Eric's roommates, who were all men, found any bugs. When I stuck by them, there was a lot less bugs around me, though. Although there was the occasional spider or roach that zoomed by, which really didn't startle me anymore. But the bugs didn't stick around if I was close to any of the guys. I realized that most of the bugs that I had seen in the house were found mostly by me and attacked me. Priscilla found a few, but we were in the same room together and her brother had found none by himself. I was clearly the target for this siege to tire me out, to have me weakened. The longer we held out waiting for it to come to us, the more delirious I would become. I realized then that I would have to set a trap for it. I asked the roommates and Priscilla's brother if they would sleep in the car outside overnight at the house because we didn't feel safe. Also, since our door wasn't fixed yet, they agreed to come over later that evening, although they asked why they had to stay in the car. I knew that it was so their presence didn't scare off the devil's mantis and that they were ready as backup but I told them an excuse about keeping an eye out for an intruder was just easier in the car. When me, Priscilla, and Eric got to the house, we had a few hours of peace where there were absolutely no bugs. I had left Leo at Eric's apartment to keep him safe. Eric had agreed to stay inside until his friends came over. Then he would go take watch with them. I appreciated they wanted to make us feel safer. I didn't feel ready at all to face the devil's mantis. I sat on the couch with Priscilla, I didn't even bother taking a nap. I just sat inside, enjoying the peace and quiet. My thoughts wandered over about how getting a gun would help so much in this moment, but it would have taken too long to get one, and no one I knew had one. I cursed myself, but then I stopped. I cursed the creature instead for making me feel so helpless and desperate that I felt I needed heavy firepower to even feel like I would survive. The sun dipped lower into the sky. A giant fly started buzzing around me in my head. It clinked against the glass frames and TV. Then it tried crawling on my face. It landed on my lips and by my eyes. It's disgusting little feet brushing and tickling my face. I tried to shoo it away, but it wouldn't leave me alone. I got up, but it followed me. I grabbed a fly swatter and aggressively started swinging it around. Priscilla used her arms to try to keep it into the living room. I chased and chased after it, slamming the swatter down hard, trying to kill it. Finally, it landed on the sliding glass doors. With a satisfying smack, I killed it. A small smile escaped out of me. But as my eyes focused and looked through the glass, I saw it. My blood ran cold and my heart skipped a beat. The devil's mantis stared right back at me. Its body was illuminated from behind by the sun, making it look like the darkest shadow. It was in its miniature form, but I still felt its chaotic energy radiating out. Then it quickly scurried away. I yelled to Priscilla that I saw it and to get Eric. He had taken a phone call. Suddenly, we heard Eric's screams from the front of the house. We both ran outside and saw that he was covered in fire ants and centipedes. He was trying desperately to get them off as they swarmed all over his body. Immediately, he bolted down the street, flailing his arms. Priscilla ran after him, taking off her large cardigan to try to help him rub the ants off. I quickly ran back into the living room to grab my phone. I immediately started dialing for Eric's roommates to come over and help. I had barely pushed two numbers when I glanced up to go out the front door. I froze. Standing in the doorway was the devil's mantis. It was in its true form. It was staring right at me with its one good eye. I dropped my phone in shock. It had ruined all my plans and had me alone. It opened its wings up slowly. Then it opened up its clawed arms. 
It stretched itself out, showing off its body, trying to intimidate me or just getting itself ready for its attack. My eyes darted around the living room. I saw that the large butcher knife was still on the coffee table. A baseball bat was on the couch and the tire iron was on the floor by the couch. The knife was the closest to me. I slowly stepped closer to the knife. This set the creature's wings off. That dry, brittle buzzing sound filled the air. It took a step closer. Every step that I took, it moved forward too. But its legs were so long that it brought itself within a few feet of me. My hand was so close to the knife. I prepared myself and then lunged for the knife. It flew behind me and tried to grab my back. I spun around slashing at its head. I jumped back. Then I tried to make a run for the front door. I touched the door jamb, but it grabbed my shoulders. I reached behind and wildly started stabbing it, but the knife had a hard time piercing through the skin. It just kind of bounced off. It immediately pulled me close to its chest, my back being stabbed again by those spikes on its body. I struggled, but its arms were so strong, and this time it used its extra legs at the sides to pin me down. Its abdomen lowered again. The wet, slimy probe wrapped up my leg. It was gray and fleshy, dripping slime. It was reaching up again. Suddenly, what it was doing became clear. I didn't want to admit it to myself before because of how disturbing it was. It was trying to impregnate me. That's why I wasn't dead. I screamed in terror and kicked my legs furiously. My large, oversized shirt slipped off. I was down to my tank top and pants. It lost its grip for a second. I stabbed down at the gray probe. This pierced into my own leg, but I didn't care. I grabbed the probe and sliced the top of it off, which cut into my pants. It shrieked in pain and took a step back. I dropped the knife, then jumped to grab the tire iron. I ran outside the door. I could tell that it was close behind me. By this point, it was dark outside. I could hear the buzzing growing louder. Suddenly, I was lifted up into the air. I screamed as the devil mantis flew me up into the air. It took me far up, almost to the top of the trees. The breeze on my face was cool and whipped my hair around fast. I was terrified of heights, but I wanted to get away even more. I jabbed that tire iron into the shoulder of the mantis and pulled back hard. I heard a pop. It shuddered in pain and loosened its grip. I was almost dropped about 50 feet. Suddenly, it lowered down closer to the ground, but was still flying away from my house. I took the sharp end of the tire iron and pointed it towards myself. I ducked my head as I lifted my arms up and over and plunged it straight into its head. It freaked out, but kept a death grip on my arm. We crashed into the dirt. I tried to crawl away, but it pulled me closer again. Its useless pro flailed around wildly, its slime being thrown everywhere. I reached up and yanked the tire iron out. I could hear Priscilla screaming my name in the distance. I whacked the iron repeatedly into the wrist to break it off the arm. Even when it popped off, the hand kept its grip on me. I smashed the iron into the other eye, breaking it open like an egg. I screamed as I slammed the pointed edge straight into its chest. It freaked out. It lunged towards me, but I easily moved out of the way. It felt around for me, but each time it was something else like a car or a tree, it chopped it into pieces with its claws. It easily ripped the hood off of a car as it searched for me. I realized how easily it could have killed me this entire time if it wanted to, but it chose me. Why? Why did it want me? As I stared at it flying around in a frenzy, a huge armored truck came around the corner. It smashed into the mantis and ran it over. The mantis struggled and did some damage to the vehicle by clinging onto the front hood. A group of soldiers jumped out with large guns I had never seen before. They focused their guns on it. I turned around and saw black cars approaching. They pulled up next to me. I saw some men and women in suits step out. Most of them went over and started taking notes or voice recordings of the creature. I saw that Priscilla was in one of the cars. A man walked up to me and introduced himself as Dr. O'Shea. He congratulated me for my strength and perseverance. He apologized for them being late. I asked, who are you? 
He said, I am part of an institute that deals with the supernatural. I cut him off. So you work with the police? He said, in a way, the records are what led us here tonight. Please follow me. We will take you somewhere safe so you can recover. After that, we have some questions we would like to ask you. I didn't hesitate for a second. I followed him. I was glad that at least this nightmare was over. Okay, everyone, we all survived that story. I really was cringing throughout this whole story. Personally, I hate grasshoppers. Praying mantises are a close second, but I don't know why, but grasshoppers to me are just so much creepier and like more disgusting to me. I think it's because their back legs just look so gross and at least the praying mantis has the decency of hiding that, you know what I mean? Hiding its nastiness. If you're on YouTube, comment down below and tell me what insects that you hate or what phobia you have if you really like insects, which, you know, good for you because there's a billion of them out there, so we gotta watch our backs. <laughs> Anyway, thank you everybody for listening to Midnight Tale Podcast. Please like, subscribe, and share. Your support really helps to grow this podcast. Please let your friends and family know about us. I really appreciate all the support in helping us grow. I'm glad that you are all here today. And this is me, Celeste, signing off until again. I'll see you in your dreams. Bye, everybody.